All right, so this video follows up the video tutorial that I just did on compound interest and deals with present value. In this video, you're gonna see how you can determine how much you need to invest today to purchase expensive items in the future. Okay, so present value. This formula here, I have derived from the compound interest formula. You can see that I've just solved for P. I've divided both sides by this uh, set of brackets to the power of N, and I've changed P into PV and A into FV. So this formula is not new, it looks new, but I promise it's exactly the same. Okay, it's just rearranged. So if you've seen the video lesson that I did on compound interest, this video will seem very familiar and not very complicated. So feel free to watch that one if you wanna pop back in. So PV, present value, this is your initial amount or your principal. Your FV, this is your future value, so what your investment will grow to. Your interest rate, as usual, is I, and we write that as a decimal in our formula, and N is the number of, co of compounding periods. So we're still dealing with compound interest here. We've just rearranged so that we can determine present value, so how much we have to invest in order to have enough money to purchase something expensive. So this first example is going to deal with that situation where you're investing some money today, you want to have $1,000 in six years, you've found this, this investment opportunity where you're being paid 5.75% interest per year compounded quarterly. How much do you need to invest? That's the goal here. You want to find out how much you have to put into this bank account to get $1,000 in six years. So we know that we want to have $1,000 in the future. So that's our future value. And we know that we're dealing with 5.75% interest per year. So that's going to be our interest rate. But we do have to compound it quarterly. So remember, we divide this by four because we're getting a fourth of that interest at four times throughout the year. So in six years, we're gonna have four compounding periods six times. So we multiply those two numbers to get 24 for our N value. And this is really just a matter of substituting into our new formula. Okay, so we're gonna substitute those values in and you're gonna see that this is really just a matter of dividing two numbers to get your present value. So this tells you that you need to invest $709.96 to have $1,000 in six years in this particular account. So a second example here, let's say you wanna borrow some money, you're trying to buy a motorcycle and some cool riding gear, and you estimate that in five years you can pay back $12,000. You've come across two loan opportunities and you wanna determine which one's the better option for you. So the first bank charges 8.9% interest, compounded semi-annually and the second one charges 8.4% interest compounded monthly. So this one has a lower interest rate, but the compounding periods are monthly as opposed to semi-annually. So let's do a couple calculations and compare and see which one is the better option for your riding gear and motorcycle. All right, so the first one we'll look at is the Regal Bank, the first option. So we're gonna just break this down by writing out what we're given. So our future value we know is going to be $12,000. So that's how much we want to have to pay back. Our interest rate is 8.9%. We're compounding it semi-annually, so we're gonna divide that by two. And we're gonna take our five years and multiply that by two to get our N value. Let's take a look at what we have here. So substituting this information into our formula, you see that we end up with $7,764.20. Okay, so that's how much that we, we'd be able to take out as our loan from this bank. So let's look at the second bank. So same thing, I'm gonna write out the information that we're given same future value, different interest rate, different compounding period. So I'm dividing by 12 because it's monthly and I'm multiplying the number of years by 12. So 12 months per year, five years, we have an N value of 60. Substituting this information in, you can see that I end up with $7,896.11. So which option is better? Well, if we borrow from the second option, this I would argue this is a better option because we get more money up front. Okay, the first option, it's just not as much as the second option. So we get more money up front if we take the second bank. Okay, that's really the end of this tutorial. Just sort of introduce this rearranged present value formula from the compound interest formula. The problems behave in the same way. It's really just a matter of, you know, what you're solving for. 